there are so many things that you can complain about and there's so many things that happen that are you know that are frustrating this this woman sarah her her one wish because she knew that she was slowly dying her one wish was to live long enough to see her son off to kindergarten like that is and she got to see him go I think it was like two or three days. Well, yeah. So when I was with her for our birthday, that's that was, all she wanted. She and couldn't wait to, um, for her birthday, you know, her 40th birthday. She was so excited for that. And then when I was with her right after we sang happy birthday to her and she blew out the candles, we were just sitting at the table chit chatting. And she said that like, she, you know, we didn't talk too much about the milestones that she's going to miss or, you know, I don't know if she, she was in denial a little bit. I mean, they had recommended hospice and she wasn't accepting it because she kept on taking the chemo treatment. I mean, she just went in for treatment number six a couple days before she died. I mean, she was really, she did not want to leave her son. She did not want to leave her family. She so badly wanted to live this life. She, she was so frustrated with her body. She texted me and said, that she had fallen in the bathroom and she couldn't get herself up and no one was there. So she had to call the neighbor. And this is a woman that just, just, I mean, no one really wants that, but she just was so frustrated. And instead of, instead of anything else, she just said she was frustrated and she like, she just so badly wanted to live this life and to have these milestones with her chill, like with her son. And, and I just feel like, if that isn't a wake up call for all of us who complain about the weather or we complain about, I don't know, just like the most like a cold or, I mean, this woman was in pain. She was in agony. She was begging for another day on earth with her family. And she still didn't complain. I mean, I was with her in Florida and she, she took a tumble like out of the pool I don't think I, I don't know if I told you this or not, but she like fell and it was a hard hit. The woman didn't complain. She didn't, she just, it was just shocking to me. Like the way that she held herself and like with like grace and dignity, but also like it would have been completely fine if she did complain and like break down and, but she didn't. And so I guess for me, the biggest change that this happened is from Sarah in my life in the sense that, you know, right now my grandma died and then Sarah died, the hurricane's coming, Henley and Hendricks have been sick, I'm sick. And usually I would be like, oh man, like not another hit against me. But I, instead I am genuinely like, thank you, Jesus, that I'm alive. Thank you that my legs are working. Thank you that my body is going to, I am just focusing on being so thankful because I know that Sarah would love to be here right now prepping for a hurricane, you know, like she would have no qualms whatsoever having to hunker down at her house and isolate for a couple days because, you know, her kid has hand, foot and mouth. So, I mean, she would love that problem. She would love all of, like she would love to have the problem of not being able to breathe through her nose for a couple days. I mean, the woman could, couldn't breathe without oxygen anyways. And so I think the biggest lesson that we can all take away from Sarah is, is that a, when I know for sure what she would want is for women to know that we can be an advocate for ourselves. We don't, it's not that we're not, we're not against doctors. She's never against a doctor, but, so, but sometimes you just happen to know yourself better. And doctors wouldn't have ever thought ovarian cancer for her because she wasn't even at that age range yet. The woman died from ovarian cancer. And so if you feel something is amiss in your body, don't let anybody shame you or belittle you or like poo poo you get it checked out. And if a doctor doesn't want to, then go to another one and that's okay. And don't feel bad about that. That's the first thing I know Sarah would want me to say, like to, to you listening. The second thing that I, I know that she would be proud, I think, to know that I'm sharing about her, that she 
would have never asked. I mean, the woman never asked for a thing. I mean, she really wanted to share her story and get her story out. In the sense to help others, to hopefully mm-hmm. prevent this from happening for someone else. And she really wanted screenings to become more more prevalent and common. I mean, it is kind of crazy that in 2023, ovarian cancer, there is no screening. Like, especially for a silent cancer like that, like there should absolutely be a screening. But the other thing that I think she'd be really proud of is the fact that her character has left such an impact on my life. I mean, truly. And I hope that it will leave an impact on yours too, if you're listening, because if you think about, you know, when you complain about, oh, you know, the food isn't salty enough or, you know, it's not, it's not, it's cold and you're at a restaurant, uh, you know, or just like the little things that you bicker about. Yeah. Or like the weather, God, it's raining again. It's so gloomy outside. Thank goodness we even get to enjoy or be around that gloomy weather. Thank goodness we can eat that food that doesn't even taste as warm or as salty as we'd like it to be. Thank goodness that we get to about my cooking (laughs) now, but like even with Henley and and Hendrickson, if they're bickering and fighting and it's like, thank goodness we're here to see the bickering and the fighting because Sarah no longer gets to do any of that. And she so desperately wanted to stay on this earth. I mean, she did not want to go and I'm going to hold it together. But, you know, for all the times that we can just so easily fall into the realm of complaining about like the mundane in life, don't forget that life can go by so fast and we're not promised tomorrow. And, you know, when I first met Sarah, she told me she had a 27% chance of being alive in five years. And sure enough, not even two years later and she's gone. So, and she, she knew that. And so what I'm trying to say to you and to myself, even like I am like preaching to the choir over here too, because what I've been reminding myself every single day is that first of all, right now, right here, we all think we have forever, right? Like we never think about death. Like I just never think about that, but it it could come as fast as that. 